Hello and welcome to Matt's Mosh Pit. And tonight I get to share with you my conversation with the guys in Orbit Culture. Um, but before I do, I just want to say thank you so much for all the love and support you've shown me and my channel so far. It truly means a lot and I cannot thank you enough for that. So um, folks, as you guys know, if you've been following the channel, I'm a huge fan of Orbit Culture. Um, last year, I picked Descent as my favorite album of the year, and I 100% stand by that. If you haven't heard it, definitely go and check it out. But um, yeah, I found out that the guys were coming to my area, and the moons and the stars and the planets all aligned, and it worked out to where we could sit down and um, have a great conversation and I'm just so excited to share it with you guys. So instead of me droning more and more about it, um, let's just go right to the tape. So here you go. My conversation with the one and only orbit culture. Matt's mosh pit fans out there. This is huge for me. As you know, I picked the number one album for last year was descent by the one and only orbit culture. And now I'm here with Orbit Culture. How crazy is that? That is the coolest thing. It's all thanks to you guys. So thank you so much for all the love and support you've shown me and the channel. It gets me into cool situations just like this. We've got Chris, we've got Nick, and we've got Fred. And so, welcome. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for sitting down with me. Uh, thank you for having us. So I, I've got a whole bunch of questions here. And first of all, congratulations on signing with Century Media. Thank you. Um, so I imagine when you guys left Seek and Strike, there was probably a ton of labels after you guys. What made Century Media stick out to you guys? I think uh, it started, they, they, they started to come out to a lot of different shows that we did, and they were really knocking on our door mm -hmm. all the time. And uh, we have always been like, the key to our camp is not to talk business or anything. It's just mm -hmm. that you have to show your human side first. Yeah. Uh, and it took a lot of work for them to yeah, unlock that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think in the end they showed us um, the most, what is it called? Like, Attention. At yeah. uh, or something. Attention, maybe. I don't know. Uh, like, yeah. yeah. And drive to really. Yeah. And obviously we... We have been very cautious about like we still want to keep the creative control and all that, mm -hmm. and uh, Century listened to us in that way. So yeah. Awesome, and I, I will say you guys are amazing to your fans. And uh, just throwing me out there, um, there's a funny story that goes in line with the label signing. Um, so I got tickets to the show just on my own as a fan, and I was thank so you. <laughs> I figured I figured you know, hey, I got a channel. Let's try and see you know. And so I sent an email out and to Seek and Strike, and I basically, you know, and I got a response. That, quite frankly, it was a nice response. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. It was pleasant, but it was one of those that I have a feeling they kind of read through, and they were like, eh, let's, you know, we'll see when the time comes. And I was, I just figured, okay, it is what it is. And then, like, the next day, you sent me an email and was like, yeah, let's do it. And I'm like, that's so awesome. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And so um, then the day after that, it got announced that you guys left Seek and Strike. And so, of course, I looked at my wife and I was like, that's because of me. I was like, <laughs> they must not have felt that I, they treated me properly. <laughs> and now they left. And I know it has nothing to do with me, but that was... Quite frankly, I told that Absolutely. it worked with the wife. It yeah. made it seem like I had some kind of cool power. Um, but anyway, no power. She, my camera, my camera person, she's saying no. Um, so anyway, th uh, there's so much I want to cover with the tour and, and all of that. How is this tour going so so well so far? I think, uh, especially here in the U.S., it's the best tour for us we've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. It, the the Machine Head crowd and also Fear Factor crowd seems to be digging what we do mm -hmm. um, during the first song they're like what the hell is this but mm -hmm. uh, at the end of every set every night they seem to be yeah raising their horns and shit so yeah awesome. I think I think we're winning them over <laughs> it's, the reviews that I'm seeing I think are fascinating just to throw like a parallel for me um, you know back in the 80s you know Ozzy Osbourne was touring with Metallica during uh, Master of Puppets and at the time, a lot of people were going, they, 
who doesn't love Ozzy? Like, so I'm not to throw, you know, shade to Ozzy, but people were going specifically to see Metallica. And I'm not going to say, I'm not going to lie, this is the case for me, and I've seen a lot of other people that are saying, you know, I'm there to see Orbit Culture. And it's just amazing That's that so you cool. guys have yeah. been able to do that. I mean, uh, we, we try to read a lot, you know, of the comments and stuff online, mm -hmm. but uh, the more we play and stuff, the, the less time we have to do that kind of thing. But we have really felt it in the crowd, mm -hmm. the atmosphere. Like, there's uh, a lot more Orbit Culture shirts mm -hmm. in the crowds these days, so that's cool. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. So when you, you guys have toured America a couple times at this point, so you've been back and forth, I think, with three or four times. Uh, fourth time, I think, yeah. I'm a big fan of, like, food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is there something that, like, food-wise, when you're going around, when you're, like, when you're going around America, like, is there a specific food you look forward to that you don't get in Sweden or in Europe? Or is there something that, like, you're like, oh, no, we're in America, I can't get whatever i mean for me personally mm -hmm. i love shrimps and mm -hmm. especially in california mm -hmm. you have all that stuff so yeah you can find it everywhere but i mean so in, you look in forward california, to california because yeah, you're I'm, like i can eat good I, I like california in many different levels but mm -hmm. when it comes to food shrimp like fried rice with shrimps mm -hmm. and all that stuff and like here you can like order steaks with shrimps mm -hmm. so. surf and turf <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Yes. so is that not a big in sweden they don't do that or is no, that no i don't think so in, in, not so much as they are doing here oh, okay um and uh, of course burgers yes yeah okay uh when it comes to the pizza over here i'm not as pleased as really? back at home no yep oh in, Sorry, but that's the truth. No, that's that's, that's good to know. Cause yeah. like, if when I go to when I go to Sweden, I think I'm I'm gonna go on tour with you guys. You guys don't know it yet, but eventually, yeah. uh, when I go to Sweden, what should I look out for? Cause you guys are in like the middle, if I'm correct, of Sweden. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what what should I look out for food wise? Pizza. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah uh, that's apparently, for, the pizza is yeah, yeah. better than American pizza. You have to pizza. try it. What makes it different? Like, what is it just the the I mean, it's the, like the... Something in the water? <laughs> no, I mean... I think the, it's the sauce. Yeah. The gravy, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is it like, is it more of a sweet sauce or a tangy sauce? It's, okay. it's, I think it's like garlic-based somehow. Okay. But uh, especially where we live in that area, uh, it's only in that area that it exists in that way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and uh, even people like from let's say Stockholm or mm -hmm. Gothenburg like when they go to the area where we live they're like holy shit this is good really? yeah and uh but i think yeah it's i might be very wrong but i, I guess it comes from turkey yeah the, the the pizza that we like it's not uh, that typical okay. uh, pan pizza style yeah. that you no. might have here mm -hmm. it's more like thinner okay. but it's yeah it was super good with that sauce, yeah. So awesome. th uh, we have to recommend that. Hey, there, you, there you go. You've heard it here, yeah. folks. <laughs> you didn't know there was going to be pizza questions on the on the on the exam here. And my apartment is actually above a pizzeria. Yeah. Really? Pizzeria, yeah. <laughs> if I were not married, I would be in the same uh, same boat. Um, but they've actually had to cut me off on pizza because you know there. I could do a whole show on pizza, so yeah. you, know, you don't want to be involved in that. Um, so touring in America, they always say it's like it's different because it's much larger. But are there any other like differences? Like, what's the biggest difference for you guys, you know, touring in America versus Europe? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I mean, the roads, for instance, here in the U.S. is um, not that spectacular <laughs> if you compare it to Europe, you know. Yes, the infrastructure, not the best. Um, yeah, it's like going on a gravel road that's been unmaintained for 20 years in Sweden, uh, approximately. No, just kidding. But <laughs> uh, I mean, that, sure, the distances are uh, a big part of it. Um, but I mean, I enjoy touring in the U.S. because because of the fans and just uh, you know, kind of the way people are towards each other and like in the metal community here it's i feel like it's it's more of a, a connection uh like with the bands and the fans together as well you know uh 
Maybe it's because everybody has the same language here if you compare it to Europe, where it's like different languages, uh, different countries, like smaller in that sense. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I love the US to, to tour here, to be honest. So, yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering if there's different um, customs, because we're actually going to be going to um, Europe for a show in um, October. And I was just wondering if, like, it's going to be another metal show. So I was just wondering if there's, like, different metal customs that are different from, the, you know, the fans in America versus in Is there? Europe. I, I think so. It's, like, it depends on where we're going. Where are we going? London. London. Yeah. The, the England crowds are really good. Yes. Super polite, too. Okay. Uh, like, they, they start the sickest mosh pits ever. Awesome. Uh, compare that to France, where they're more laid back, mm -hmm. very, very reserved. Germany, I think you have to win them over, too. Yeah. But they are mm -hmm. kind of a mix between okay. the Englishmen and the, and the French. The French, it's yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's good to know. So, yeah, so tiny details okay. like that, yeah. Cool. Mm. So... Um, I'm going to transition from the touring to the actual music itself. Um, I am so fascinated by your process in making the music. From what I understand, it, you're, you're, you mix everything, you produce everything, write everything. And so and a lot of it's done based on the computer. So I'm assuming you're putting in, you know, like a guitar part here, a drum part here, and and then you just tweak it from there. Do you cr have you ever created some just crazy stuff that like can't be played <laughs> in re in like real life? Since uh, yes, because <laughs> like I feel like I want an album of that. Like I like just put out an EP of stuff that just can't be played for not having enough hands sake <laughs> i mean uh, i think mashuga did a similar thing back in the day but for them that's too extreme too but i mean they can play anything but not yeah. that e uh, is it an ep or something i can't remember the name of mm -hmm. it but uh, i've thought about it but uh i i mean i like to write songs mm -hmm. uh and not like tricks Just crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so how does that how does that work like how do you like now that the band's kind of been the same crew for a while, how does the songwriting change versus you know back in the day? Like now, is there more of an input as far as you know, give me a riff? I think it's uh, kind of the same process as mm -hmm. always, but we are much more confident in in talking about stuff too, mm -hmm. uh, and especially when it comes to drums or whether it's bass. Uh, you know, it's we are. We trust each other more, I think, mm -hmm. uh, because we have. I mean, it's let's say it's still a one guy sitting at a computer, but it's still a shared vision, I think, mm -hmm. in some way. Um, I think because I bounce so much uh, from the other guys, mm -hmm. because you can easily see if they don't like it or yeah, stuff like that. If yeah. it's interesting enough, because <laughs> yeah, I was Learn actually to, to uh, watch our expressions. Exactly. Oh, yeah. okay. Our that that's. I mean, we are sweet, so we yeah. shut the fuck up and oh, just okay. look at each other. <laughs> okay, because that, that's just like just somebody just wins and like. Yeah. Because yeah. it takes. I was I was explaining um, to my faithful camera person here that you know a lot of bands have a producer that literally can go in and say yeah you're too close to the music it's you know it could be done here and here but when you're literally doing all of that how do you get that how do you, how do you, you get it's, there's a level of confidence that says this is what i'm putting out it's right i think it's and you've been right so far i just want to clarify <laughs> i love everything uh i hate everything oh really <laughs> no, oh is it no but i, I think it's just i uh, like a like a, a side effect of it that you uh what we we actually talked about the, this the other day. How many mixes I did for Vultures of North, mm -hmm. and it was, what was it like sixty something. And then you can you can you can barely hear yeah. like what, what what the difference is between anymore. But mm -hmm. uh, I think well, once you're so fatigued, you're just like fuck it. This is done. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything more. Fuck fuck yeah, this. I I quit. The world. Yeah, either that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it feels like I'm quitting because I'm so tired yeah. of it every time. But uh, on the next record, we we actually gonna bring in a guy uh, mm -hmm. 
to ov- more like oversee the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, not so much. Yeah, obviously it's gonna mix it, but mm-hmm. I'm still gonna do a, 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 like a like a what is it called like a reference mix. So, mm-hmm. but I just want the sonic uh, sonic skill that th- this guy possess, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, he has a really good ear, and uh, we're gonna dwell uh, into a lot of the drumming yeah. part of it too. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say you have a great ear because you guys created you created a sound that's. Like, I don't know who else is doing what you guys are doing as far as, like, the specific sound that you guys have. And it's fantastic. Oh, uh, thank and, you. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was wondering if there's a – so you guys, I, I call it very accessible, I will say. Um, it's accessible to, like, everybody, it seems like. Because cool. it's it's very heavy, like it's you know it's very heavy. You definitely have the heavy parts, but then you also have like the choruses that are, work really really well. And um, so for me, it's very accessible. It's it's fun for me to turn people on to your band because I don't have to wince and go, okay, well I'm only going to play like uh, oh, yeah. you know, like <laughs> the slower type of thing. Was that a conscious decision, or that's just that's your taste and that's what? You, I think yeah, it's just that's the taste, and I think that's that's the like the backbone that we all share. I think in this mm-hmm. band is that we like songs mm-hmm. more than like like playing five hundred notes a second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that that yeah. doesn't interest any one of us. It's yeah. cool to see, but it, you turn it off after fifteen seconds mm-hmm. <laughs> at least. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. But but it also comes down to that I I I'm not that good of a guitar player to begin with. So it's yeah my. I have my limits. <laughs> I I don't play anything. Yeah. And everybody knows I don't play anything. I I do a lot of um, reaction videos just to you know, and I'll watch people and and I can't tell you if they're you know the next you know Ingve or yeah, yeah. or they're me just <laughs> one step above, <laughs> but um but no like I guess and that's like you know you're your own critic right I think you do an amazing job on the guitar. When do you have like the confidence to know, like when, when you were younger, you know, yes, I want to start a band, you know, this is the, the style I want to go into. Like, when did that happen for you? Uh, I mean, my mom, I was lucky enough to get a, get a, get a very cheap guitar, but it was an electric guitar um, during Christmas. I think it's, yeah, when I was 11, maybe. 12 mm-hmm. uh started to write songs immediately after i was done with like showing off in the mirror mm-hmm. <laughs> uh so i started with a software called guitar pro uh mm-hmm. and st- started just pushing numbers uh which then became like midi sounds um but then uh i like asked my mom can i get a audio interface please <laughs> And uh, that's when I found like um, Easy Drummer and Superior Drummer and stuff from Tune Track, and mm-hmm. yeah, that's yeah, I've been hooked ever since. I'm very thankful. <laughs> <laughs> it's so uh, cool. Hey, you guys too. Um, when did you guys start um, playing instruments and realizing I'm gonna be in a band? Forget anything else in life. This is this is what's up for me. So uh, for me, I've always played like. Uh, instruments mm-hmm. for uh, you know like just if there's an instrument I'll I'll see how it works and, and stuff like that but um, like the, the the turning point for me was I think when I was about 12 11 12 years old or something uh, my cousin showed me the Rock in Rio DVD with Iron Maiden and um, yeah I just saw that I was like oh shit that's that's mm-hmm. dope I'm gonna start play bass so I did there you go, Steve Harris. That's yeah. Yeah. Th- yeah. That actually, yeah, that's my. Iron Maiden is the reason I started this whole channel. Oh, shit. Like it, I, f- you never know when you find music, and I was the biggest dummy because I grew up listening to hard rock and metal. Never once listened to Iron Maiden or Judas Priest, for that matter, until like two years ago. I had free tickets to see Iron Maiden on tour. Changed my life. Now I'm like, a, you know, I'm in the fan club. You they know. do that to you. Yeah. yeah. That's so, what they do. And I I bought a bass, yeah. and I wanted to be the next Steve Harris. <laughs> and she hates there the fact go. that I have not picked up the bass since. Oh, shit. I need to, though. Yeah. You have to tell that story. And we, oh, the... the, the oh, yeah. Okay, so we, we did our probably biggest show there at Grass Pop in Belgium this summer. 
and uh, after this, yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And you know, we walked off there, and I think everybody was like, "Fuck yeah, this was great," you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So after that, we went out and we had a few beers with some fans, friends uh, that actually come from the U.S. to Belgium to see mm -hmm. us among other bands, obviously. So yeah, we went from there and we got separated somehow. Uh, and I walked to the green room area. Um, and I tried to call my guys and nobody was answering, you know, because mm. festival and, and the mobile services are kind of down, you know. So I stood there kind of pissed, uh, like, where the fuck are you guys? And I stood with my phone like this. I was like, all right, fuck it. Put it down my pocket and watched up like this. And I was like, is, <laughs> is that Steve Harris? And he was, you know, he stood there talking with some, some guys mm -hmm. uh, in the backstage area. Because I think, yeah, I'm, they must have uh, played with uh, British Lion, his mm -hmm. side project. Yeah, so I just walked up there and I'm like, excuse me, Steve, you know, <laughs> like a Swede. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can I take a picture? And he was like, yeah, sure, mate, you're all right. Super cool. Yeah, super awesome. cool, yeah. But I was just, you know, like shaking my ass yeah. off. Yeah, that was so weird That's and fantastic. crazy. Yeah. Th that and and I do want to get to Chris how you started, but it does. One of the questions I had further on down the line is I always wonder like y the level you guys are at. You guys are blowing up. You're playing all kinds of different shows, and you have those festival dates where you have the possibility of meeting your hero, like mm -hmm. meeting your who got you into it. And so I always wonder, did you meet your hero? But also. Did they let you down anyway? Like, because they always say never meet your heroes. But right, you yeah. Know, and if they if they exceeded yeah. or matched, but you got to meet Steve. I did, yeah. So that was uh, unreal. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, you know. And so you have the picture proof, right? Yes. Awesome. Of course. Awesome, <laughs> uh, Nicholas. Uh, yeah, where were we? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, meeting your heroes. Have oh, you, yeah. Have you gotten a chance to like who who was your biggest like musical hero? James Hetfield, but uh, I'm scared to meet him. <laughs> really? Is it just? No, I think I would just uh, yeah fall down and cry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, but it's uh, yeah. Hopefully someday. But yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you know if it has? Have you gotten any word from that camp? Whether they're even aware or? I have no clue, man. Okay. I don't think I don't think I want to know either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris. Yep. Um. I have never met my hero, uh, but it would be Dave Grohl. Okay. Yeah. And I'm kind of in the same spot as Nicholas. I don't know if I could have handled it or if I'm, I don't know. I've heard he seems like a very down to earth mm -hmm. guy, mm -hmm. like uh, doing all these good things and all that stuff. So, yeah. I will say I grew up right where he grew up yeah like, yeah right uh, probably about 45 minutes from here is where um you know i when back in the nirvana days um i would see him and like in, when i was in high school you'd see people that like were much closer to dave than i ever was hmm. but i'd see him like driving his motorcycle back and forth you know Flash. down the street but literally grew up in the exact same area that hmm. he he grew up in his i can say it was that close to him close That's cool. close to him but I, cool. I i never met him either but it'd be the same situation so we gotta make that happen what <laughs> I, I know i've got some friends that <laughs> we'll, we'll he says, yeah, yeah. We'll pull the strings, but um, I'm getting all sweaty here. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 Dave inspired you. From yeah, the drums, that's like, like when you saw. I mean, my mom and my dad—they are like. Uh, how how should I explain it? Like they are really into music, mm -hmm. like all that stuff. They went to festivals mm -hmm. and took me to festivals when I was a kid. We had a festival in my hometown there I grew up and we started like I started to go in, uh, go to that festival when I was like a kid mm -hmm. with them yeah, of course um, they didn't play any instruments or anything like that but they just like I'm guessing they were trying like to here ha here you have a guitar maybe he would be interested in that mm -hmm. or like I wasn't interested in the guitar playing, but I got a guitar. But then 
I saw Dave Grohl, mm -hmm. like MTV Live and Loud mm -hmm. with Nirvana. And that was like, <clears throat> you're like, I'm done. Yep. That's... I need, I, that is what I will do for mm -hmm. the rest of my life. And I was like 10 or 11 or something. So mm -hmm. I started playing drums 1998. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, I, I said, it, it's amazing because I see, like, I feel like I see you guys' future is just blowing up beyond, you know, it, you know, just because I was, I was telling somebody that I liken you guys in your stage from what I can see, and granted I'm not an expert, but from what I can see, um, just to use, like, the Metallica reference, where they were right around, like, Ride the Lightning area, but, like, like, People are definitely going to see them before, you know, the headlining band. But obviously the sky's the limit from a Metallica trajectory. And so um, when, do you guys, like I think you guys are in it. You guys are living it day to day. Do you guys see the, the upward trajectory or is it because you're living it day to day, you just see I just do this every day. It's, a, it's just what I do, but I don't necessarily feel the the – the rise because it seems like you guys I mean, are growing huge um, um i think i think i'm me personally i'm mm -hmm. just f um, here to play drums mm -hmm. and even though i'm with the band i'm playing in is opening for fear factory and machine head mm -hmm. that is like super child cool. childhood bands for me yeah so but I don't think I'm trying not to think of it like that, mm -hmm. like prioritizing the drumming thing in our, in our show. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like everyone of us is doing that. We are like very just down to earth. To yeah. Just no. we want to play live, and that's like the mm -hmm. main goal. Because you know, like and this is once again for me not not being in the world. You always see like those like VH1 behind the musics where people go, we just knew at the time that we had something and we were, we were, you know, working with it. You can almost like feel that vibe. And that's why I was just curious to see if you guys feel, if you feel that vibe or you feel the. I mean, I think that's kind of too much ego for us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, 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 we know that we are here because we, we we try to make good music, mm -hmm. and w obviously we had had a lot of luck too. Mm -hmm. uh, everything like the stars just aligning, uh, mm -hmm. but at the same time we have to be very humble about it. And I think we are. Uh, yeah. It would yeah. be way worse if it, this happened when we were twenty. I can promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but also, like, yeah, you know, I think the perspective. Uh, changes when you get home for mm -hmm. a while that's when it really starts kicking yeah. like holy shit did we actually do that yeah, yeah. Okay. stuff like that i mean right now for us you know I, I think it's all about like doing the best shows we can do every night and mm -hmm. uh, if there's problems or whatever something doesn't work you just try to like fix it and make it like tiny mm -hmm. tiny better like all the time because you want to be you know as as good as you possibly can yeah, because that's how you progress, and I think we're all like—I mean, we are all of us hard workers. Mm -hmm. We really like stick to to the details, and like because that's where you can elevate the mm -hmm. the experience for the audience, and uh, you know the musicianship and the stage presence and all that stuff. And we got so good um, circumstances, which yeah. we're in now, to actually do that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I'd say that's what it's all about right now. But yeah. like you say, like when we come home and you get to like relax a bit, then you're like, oh fuck, we actually played. Yeah. Uh, we played. Where were we in New York? The uh, Times Square. We actually played Times Square in New wow. York. You know, that's kind of yeah. probably like, wow, oh shit. But that, and that's a great way of putting it too. I know you did, you said it better than I did. It's like when you, I guess it is when you just like, you know, lay your head down in your pillow at night and just go, wow, we actually did that we actually did something cool like you guys have just a, i think it's a sold out european tour coming up and that's pretty cool in its own yeah, right it's, you know it's fucked up i don't understand <laughs> it but it's it's there <laughs> <laughs> no but uh, uh, our stage manager marcus came up to me the other day and <clears throat> when we were just before we hit the stage in new york like 
guys, you know that your logo is on the banners next to Times Square? We're like, that's cool. But that's something that will yeah, yeah, cross just, your mind when you get home. Like, that's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. That's like we are a, we are a band from a very small town in Sweden, and nobody would believe that. <laughs> yeah, because I'll be honest with you, I'm having this moment with you guys. Yeah. So I'm literally going, I can't believe they said yes. But it's good <laughs> that know? we can share it. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're having we're having these this moment together, and it's just it's been it's amazing. So um, that, like I said, I'm gonna lay my head on my pillow tonight. Oh, just literally talked to orbit culture. <laughs> <laughs> and so um so so thank you for that um oh, thank you man. so last because i know you guys are busy and you guys got a lot of stuff to do the one thing i always like to know is you know we're all into music you know and i'm sure all different types what's the most embarrassing thing on your playlist like something that we not embarrassing because oh. you like what you like, but I mean, mm. what would what's on your playlist that people would not be shocked knowing the type of music that you play, that they'd be shocked? You know, Britney Spears. <laughs> you know, is there is there? I have a lot of weird shit on mine. You do, but the latest one is Akon. Oh, uh, we saw, I saw Akon, we saw Akon live. Oh yeah, yeah. Was he good? Yeah, actually, uh, I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know anything he did. And Gwen Stefani. He opened uh, up Gwen for Gwen Stefani. Stefani. Yeah. It was probably 15 years ago, 14 years, something like that. Mm. And yeah, it was good life. Yeah, yeah. That's was, cool. Uh, yeah, Akon. <laughs> what do you have? I'm just trying to figure it out myself. Uh, I don't know. I like Coldplay. I think okay. like their new records, like Parachutes and yeah. uh, XY or what it's called. I think those are very yeah. yeah. I mean... I'm not embarrassed mm -hmm. uh, f of any of the songs, but I think I'm speaking for both me and Richard. On this tour, we have been like playing Nick <laughs> Nicki Minaj oh, yeah. a lot. Oh, okay. Both me and Richard want to hear, hear her. R Richard's lucky that he's not here <laughs> because I know he's a collector, and I I collect autographs, so I I have I'm this weird about collecting. And I know he collects, I think, Star Wars stuff. Yep. Since he's not here, does any? Do you guys also have collections that you guys? I collect merch, like oh, just I'm trying like to like uh, getting like vintage vintage merch, okay, you know, uh, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just uh, always been a huge horror fan, but mm -hmm. it's just up until recently I started to collect Myers masks. Oh. Michael Myers mask, like yeah. The, the the original Captain Kirk. Um, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's getting there. Now I'm spending more money on that than ever. <laughs> so, awesome. Nothing yeah. for me, just good memories. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. There you go. Well, hey, that's you know what? That's the best way to end it. You know, good memories. I'm living out a dream. <laughs> you guys are living out a dream. And so thank you again so much for, you know, sitting down with me and um I I, I'm going to end this so they can get on the show because I can't wait to see them live. Like that's going to be the <laughs> coolest thing. So thank you very much. Thank you so thank much, you. buddy. So there you have it folks. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I have to say that if you ever get a chance to see orbit culture live, you absolutely need to go. They were incredible. And, and you could, you could definitely see how, they won over the crowd. I do think a lot of people were there to see Orbit Culture, but there were people that, you know, never really knew who they were. But I want to say probably by the second song, I feel like the whole crowd was just in it. And so it, it was just such a great performance. Once again, if you ever get a chance to see them, if they're in your area, you absolutely need to check out Orbit Culture. They're so good live. And I will say, nicest guys in the world. And they they treated me with, like, such respect. They were just, just super cool, super cool guys. Their crew was fantastic. I want to give a shout-out to Ben, who is their social media person, but also their merch guy. The guy is just, you know, top-notch. They're just all, all around great people. So um, really... Please absolutely go out and support Orbit Culture. They're fantastic. And yeah, make sure you check them out if you haven't already. 
Um, if you like this video, folks, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. Um, I definitely plan on having more conversations with different bands and artists and all kinds of cool things on this channel. So you're not going to want to miss out. So if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification button. So when I put out new videos just like this, you'll be the first to find out. With that being said, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.